Hi there. So the topic of this video is a dual stator alternator design that I put together um, with a radial arrangement of the coils. I made a similar device with two stators um, which was posted on YouTube a while back but in that case the um, rotor was a, a, a flat disc and uh, the stators were on either side of the rotating disc <clears throat> and I was actually extracting magnetic flux from uh, both sides of the same magnet packs but I, I noted in that video that that mechanically it's a very difficult design um, it's hard to take apart once you put it together and the uh, magnetic drag is constantly causing the rotor to uh, wobble back and forth on its, on its bearings um, <clears throat> and that a radial design would make more sense except for the fact that you have to add more magnets in order to get um, the dual stator because in this case you're only taking uh, the magnetic flux off of one end of the magnetic of the, out of the magnet stacks because the other end is inside the cylinder so here we've got a cylindrical rotor um, with two rows <coughs> of magnets alternating north south north south north south so uh, six uh, magnets in two uh, 12 magnets in two rows of six uh, the cylinder is a three inch ABS coupling like this thing here which has a uh, divider in the center it's three inches long and four and a half inches in, uh, where is that four? Anyway, in diameter. Yeah, they're actually four inches in diameter. So what I've done is I've filled this, one of these, with automotive body filler, fiberglass body filler, so that it produces a matrix which can be drilled into and then the magnets are, are set into the matrix. Um, either end I've put uh, three and a half inch uh, diameter aluminum pulleys with five eighths inch holes uh, to give a centering effect so that the five eighths inch threaded shaft is held perfectly central in, in the um, rotor cylinder. Okay, so what you get is a magnetic rotor on a 5 8 inch shaft, which is then fixed on the shaft in such a way that it will fit in the right location in the PVC housing, which is the rotor housing. At either end of the housing, you have idler pulleys, like that which provide the bearings for the shaft to turn within. Now the PVC housing is basically a coupler like that which is four and a half inches outer diameter into which the rotor with the magnets fits with approximately an eighth inch clearance around the perimeter. Um, now what I've done is joined together two of these PVC uh, sections to produce the length. You can see the division down there joined by epoxy. You have to make sure that epoxy join is very strong because it has to um, it has to take a fair amount of stress initially when you're building the thing. Also, these initially have a divider in the center, just like this one. And I have removed. Uh, you can see one still exists in in the far end, but in the in the, the close end, I have removed that so that the uh, rotor could pass in and out um, 
<clears throat> and you can disassemble and reassemble the uh, device that way. Um, okay. When we say dual stator, it means that the magnetic rotor is passing within um, stators that consist of nine coils each. Okay, so each stator, you can see there are two, consists of nine coils wired in three-phase arrangement. And uh, each stator um, has its output, its AC output, rectified by six diode bridges, which produces DC current and uh, positive and negative uh, tappable DC current and voltage at the ends. So each of the two stators has a separate diode bridge and the two diode bridges are connected in parallel in order to combine the current. Why would we want to do that? Because um, with a single stator, uh, when you have this many coils and they have a fairly high inductance, that is a lot of turns of wire, in order to produce a decent voltage output at low RPM, because we're only going to be hand cranking this, we're not going to be getting high RPMs. So we want to get, we want to develop a fairly good voltage at no more than about 35 RPM. Um, as a result, these coils have a fairly high inductive reactance, which once you connect them to a load and current is flow flowing through them, they resist. Um, uh, they resist any further current flow. So there's sort of like a, a self-limiting effect going on and after you get about 500 uh, milliamps of current going through them they, they don't want to do any more. Um, but you can get you can double the current uh, without exceeding the um, inductive reactive uh, resistance of each stator without exceeding uh, their, their limits simply by using two of them and combining the DC output through the bridges. <clears throat> so each stator produces 500 milliamps current, but what you're getting off of the combined bridges is more like uh, 1,000 to 1,300 milliamps. So that is the idea, the theoretical idea behind it. Mechanically, this is a better system because, as you can see, it is possible to assemble and re uh, disassemble and reassemble the thing with, with relative ease. Um, you just put the rotor in there and tighten up the nut on the other end and uh, set the entire apparatus in a stand with a, a gear drive like this and uh, you're good to go. Um, the ability to disassemble is nice for one thing. When I made this rotor, I, bored, I, I drilled the holes to a depth which would allow me to uh, put additional magnets in if I want. At the moment, there are five magnets, five disc magnets per stack, um, but the hole is deep enough that I could add another layer if I wanted to. Uh, economy has uh, caused me to stop at five. Uh, I had to buy extra magnets for this one, um, and uh, in the previous design I used six discs per stack, and this one is only five. Um, but I can add six if I want. Additionally, if I add additional magnets, I can have them, uh, rather than tapped flush against the rotor, they can be protruding perhaps a sixteenth of an inch uh, in order to reduce the uh, gap between the magnets and the cores of the coils. Um, when the rotor is in here and we've got an eighth of an inch gap, uh, between the rotor and the inner housing and the housing itself of an eighth of an inch that means that the gap total gap is about a quarter of an inch which is a little bit too wide for maximum performance um, the narrower you can get the gap between the magnets and the uh, coil cores the more 
electrical output you're going to get. Okay, the coils themselves are made of a core like this. These are three quarter inch um, galvanized uh, adapters, which are one inch diameter at the large end and um, 13 sixteenths diameter at the narrow end. And the narrow end is fluted and the wide end is threaded. Um, so when I've added the nylon caps to the spools, I had to use different uh, drill different size holes for each end. At the narrow end, um, they just snap onto the flutes and, and uh, they won't backtrack uh, very easily. At the, other, at the threaded end, when you put them over, you want to epoxy them so that they're firm um, because the threads don't hold as strongly as the flutes do. Um, you want to have <coughs> the bottom end of the um, uh, nylon cap made of material like, please pardon the mess in here, uh, material like this. It's basically um, um, mud guards from, uh, from a generic type of um, uh, automotive mud guard. Um, you want to have it uh, <coughs> firmly attached to the end because when you wind the coil, uh, the wire pressure uh, after about 400 turns uh, produces a fair amount of pressure outward on the on the end and if it pops off after you put 400 turns of wire on there uh, you're going to have a problem uh, backtracking and, and getting it uh, starting again without the wire tangling so it's really worth your while to make sure that the coil spools are ready before you do wind them. Um, the wire was all taken uh, from previous coils uh, like this one which was quite a bit larger and uh, and like and like this, this size as well which again is larger um, so the wire was all previously bought and simply recycled into this project by rewinding it rewinding it onto these uh, cores why did I want to use these cores because they're fairly compact um, <clears throat> and the narrowed end gives you about a third of the length with a little bit extra winding room so you can make a fairly compact coil with these things uh, and fairly short you still have what they call a heel end slug to draw the uh, the flux into the coil um, but you've got uh, a nice compact coil which is uh, fairly uh, powerful in terms of uh, voltage uh, uh, generation and uh, and uh, fits within a reasonable diameter of a retaining ring. Now <clears throat> in order to retain the coils in their positions around the housing I've used three quarter inch plywood rings and they are fourteen and a half inch outer diameter and three quarter inch thickness so you can do the math on how to, how to build them um, to a fourteen and a half inch outer diameter um, evenly spaced drill holes um, 360 divided by nine uh, and the tensioning devices are simply carriage bolts, in this case three and a half inch carriage bolts with two nuts, oh, they're, they're, they're quarter inch by three and a half inch, uh, with quarter inch nuts and quarter inch uh, washer. So the one nut fixes the carriage bolt on the outside of the ring and the inner bolt serves to uh, press the coils inwards in order to produce a tension and um, uh, tighten them up against the uh, rotor housing. The um, the cores have uh, this approximately 5 8 inch hole at the narrow end 
and uh, what I've done is put um, you can't see them from here but what I've done is put 5 8 inch uh, sections of 5 8 inch wooden dowel uh, into these um, narrow ends and then drill the quarter inch hole down the center of the wooden dowel in order to accept the carriage bolt uh, inside the upper end of the coil and uh, give a uh, uh, purchase on the coil and something to keep them in alignment while they are pressed into the center of the housing. Same thing for each stator. A total of 18 coils and as I said each stator of 9 coils is wound in a um, is wired uh, in a three-phase AC output arrangement. What do we mean by that? Well, um, it means for each set of nine you have uh, three phases each consisting of three coils. And um, what you would do is you start you select a starting point, uh, for example this one, and uh, you make all the coils, arrange all the coils so that you have them in the same sense. Now what I mean by that is for each coil, uh, for example, I have wound them um, with all the wires coming out of the upper end, so I'd be holding it from this end only with my left hand, I'll take it like so, and then winding it like that. Okay, so that's the sense of the winding clockwise like that. Um, so each coil has the same uh, winding sense, and then you end up with uh, two leads on each coil, uh, one which is an which starts at the inside, and one which finishes at the outside thickness. So you make sure that they're all um, in the same arrangement, so that you're taking in say phase one, uh, inner to outer, inner to outer, uh, and then you have a series connection between those three coils with three ends at, at the beginning and the end. So one end is a, an inner lead and the other end is an outer lead. So you end up with three leads at the beginning, phase one, phase two, phase three, with the uh, Oh, this would be here, phase one, phase two, phase three, with uh, their leads, um, which are fed to the bridge diode centers. Whereas at the other end, the other free ends are uh, joined together in a free in, in a non-connected floating point. Um, which you can see here. This is the floating point ends of uh, one stator and the floating point ends of the other stator. Okay. I'm going to set the camera uh, aside now and uh, <coughs> assemble the units and uh, give you a demonstration.
So you can see the assembled unit using a gear drive. Very little resistance here. Right now, there's no um, there's no electrical load, and when you add an electrical load, you'll find an increased resistance because you'll. You, uh, the coils become magnetized and you increase the magnetic drag, but with, with no electrical load on it, resistance is very light. Um, you can see that the voltage here is up to about 35 volts uh, with no load. And if I switch over to current reading, Three amps output with no electrical load. Um, that's 1,300 milliamps, which is pretty darn good uh, because with a single stator, you're going to be lucky to get 700. So as I marked it on here, 35 volt, 1.3 amps is the basic output. Um, I can show you basic output through a simple electrical load. being a 12 volt bulb now we're in, now we're in current Put it back to voltage 